guys, it's Hannah, and today I'm coming to you with a spoiler-free review of A Crown of Wishes by Roshni Chokshi. This video is being sponsored by St. Martin's Press, so thank you so much to them for sending this book my way and for sponsoring this video. A Crown of Wishes is the Fiction Faction book of the month, and if you don't know what Fiction Faction is, it is a book club that myself, Maureen, Natasha, and Zoe all started, and we read a different book every single month, and this is our April book of the month. On May 5th, we will also be having a live show on Natasha's channel where we all discuss this book together. So if you guys have read this book this month as well, then you should definitely come and join us over there. I will leave all the information for the live show and the book club in the description box. So if you would like to join us and discuss A Crown of Wishes with us on May 5th, then we would love to have you. A Crown of Wishes is a standalone companion novel to Roshni Chokshi's debut novel, The Star-Touched Queen. So both of these books take place in the same universe and they can stand alone as individual books. So technically you don't have to read one before the other one. I actually read A Crown of Wishes before I read The Star-Touched Queen, but I know a lot of people do recommend that you read The Star Touch Queen before you read A Crown of Wishes, which is something I will get more into in my review. <laughs> this book takes place in a fantasy world that is heavily based off of Indian mythology. And we follow around our main character, Gari, who is the princess of this one kingdom, and at one point she tried to overthrow her brother, so her brother has sentenced her to death. Clearly you can tell they don't have a very good relationship. <laughs> our other main character is Vikram, and Vikram is the prince of a different kingdom, and Gari and Vikram end up joining forces reluctantly in order to enter what is called the Tournament of Wishes. Essentially, whoever wins the Tournament of Wishes will be granted one wish, and both of them really need this one wish. Gari is trying to escape her brother who is trying to have her killed, and Vikram is also trying to save his own kingdom and his place in that kingdom. Like I said, this is a companion novel to The Star-Touched Queen, and in this book we are following characters that are related to the characters in The Star-Touched Queen. So I totally understand why people recommend reading The Star-Touched Queen before reading this one, because I will say there was a time where I was very confused with what was going on. This definitely can stand on its own, and the confusion does go away after a little while once you get used to the world, but I do think that if I had read The Star-Touched Queen first, I would have gotten a better grasp of this world, and there are a lot of allusions in this book to things that happen in The Star-Touched Queen. So really, if you want to read both of them, I would recommend reading The Star-Touched Queen before reading this one, but if you only have plans to read this one, then I definitely say go ahead and read it. You won't, like, be completely lost. It will make sense to you, and it absolutely can stand as its own story. Personally, I enjoyed A Crown of Wishes more than I enjoyed The Star-Touched Queen, even though I read this one first. I really liked the story in this one, actually, and it took me by surprise. For a while while I was reading this one, I didn't really have any sort of connection to it, and I wasn't really feeling a lot of the characters. The plot wasn't doing too much for me. But then after I got into, like, about maybe a hundred or so pages, it started to pick up, and I really started to like where the direction of the story was going. So I definitely say that if this one is kind of iffy for you at the beginning, try and push yourself through it because the rest of the story and the ending especially really wrap it up nicely and I think make the beginning of it, even though it's a bit slower, kind of purposeful. One of my absolute favorite things about the book though was the writing. I really, really love the writing. It has beautiful, beautiful prose and it's so descriptive and you can see everything very vividly and it really does give you that magical feel, which is what I'm always looking for in fantasy. I also really loved this world and I felt like I could imagine so much of it, but the one thing that I really wanted was just a bit more world building. In my opinion, there were just some gaps sometimes where the world just wasn't as full or lush as it could have been, or maybe as much as I wanted it to be. And I think that's what kind of led to some of the confusion for me at times, because there were just some gaps that I couldn't exactly fill. So as many of you know, I am very much a character-based reader. I love character-driven stories, so characters really make the book for me, and it's a very important part of the story when I'm reading. Like I said at the beginning of this book, I really didn't have much of an attachment to these characters, and I wasn't really feeling much of anything. But then again, once I got to a certain point, something just clicked for me, and I started to feel that attachment to the characters. I would say in many ways that this book is somewhat character-based, because the relationship between Gauri and Vikram is an essential part of the story, as well as Gauri's relationships with several of the other characters, and it's really relationships that kind of drive the plot forward. But I would say that it's kind of equally plot-based and character-based, because the plot is also an extremely integral part of this book. So personally for me, I think that's why it was a little bit more difficult for me to connect with these characters because I do tend to read more just straight character-driven books. But as I warmed up to these characters, I really did start to love them. Gari and Vikram really do have this amazing banter throughout the entire book, and I'm a huge fan of banter and like angst, which is what we got a lot of in here. And sometimes I know it can get like a little bit annoying, but in here I actually ended up enjoying it. They're so, so funny at times, and their relationship then just develops in such a beautiful, beautiful 
way and it was great to get to see that. But I also really enjoyed their characters as individuals as well. I feel like Vikram is such a great male character in YA literature, especially in fantasy. I feel like I've talked about this several times about how there is this male character trope in a lot of YA fantasy that I've been seeing lately that I just don't like where he's like super territorial and just overprotective of his female love interest to the point where male characters sometimes act like they have ownership over their female love interests. But Vikram was nothing like that at all. He was so fun to read about. He was lighthearted, but he had like his whole deep tortured past side to him as well, which is something again that I really love. And Gauri herself was also a great female character. She's gone through a lot of hardships in her life and that's given her a very harsh perspective on the world. But throughout the book we get to see her dealing with that and then we also get to see how her perspective changes because of the things that happen to her throughout the story. So I feel like she really does have great character development which is something that I am always happy to see. Like I said I really did enjoy the fact that this is based off of like Indian mythology because that's not something I usually read about and it's really great to see that in YA fantasy. There was a lot to the mythology in the world that I didn't know about and I didn't have any prior knowledge of so it was really exciting for me to get to read about something that's different from what I usually read about. But apart from that, this wasn't anything that was too new or revolutionary for me. The plot of this type of tournament is something that I've seen several times in other books, and the characters and the way that their relationships develop are also things that I've seen in variations before. So for those reasons, it didn't necessarily like blow my mind, but it still was very enjoyable and fun. I would definitely say that this is the type of YA fantasy that I would like to see more of. In-depth magical worlds with very lush writing, and also healthy relationships and romances that don't normalize or romanticize abusive traits. So overall, I ended up giving this book a solid four stars. Like I said, the beginning was a bit slow for me, so it took me a little bit to get into it, and then there were some like holes, in my opinion, in the magic system in the world. But once I got into it and started to gain an attachment to these characters, I ended up really, really enjoying myself while reading it, so that's why it's a solid four stars. All right guys, so that is it for my review of A Crown of Wishes by Roshni Chokshi. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read this book or The Star-Touched Queen or both of them, which one do you prefer or any of your thoughts on either of the books. Also, don't forget that the Crown of Wishes live show is on May 5th on Natasha's channel. Again, all of that information is in the description box and you can also follow all of us on Twitter. We will be talking about it and mentioning it there or on Instagram, anywhere you'd like. But thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye.